Hi, my name is Eric from mobilemusthave.com and liveandlight.net, and today we're going to talk about Peplink's wireless mesh, or what I like to call wireless uplink feature, for external access points. Thanks so much for joining us, guys, and we're super excited to talk to you about wireless uplink, also known in the Peplink world as wireless mesh. Now, before you get started on anything we talk about this in this video, you're going to want to make sure you've followed two previous videos that we've put together. The first one is our Wi-Fi best practices video, which will enable, basically tells you how to set up the Wi-Fi on this device um, in kind of the best case scenario so that it's the most compatible with various devices and gives you the most flexibility for longer range or higher speed depending on what devices you're connecting to it. So that video is linked below. That's step one. Step two is our external or additional access point video. And that video, uh, there's two videos that are out there. The one that's most popular is for our transit line. So that would be our Speed Demon, Road Warrior, Ultimate Road Warrior bundles. Any bundle that has a modem that's, um, that's a transit line or really any modem that has a built-in access point controller to control these external access points. You want to follow that video in its entirety which will set up these access points to run via this wire. That's step two. If you have a Essentials bundle with a BR1 Mini or a Full Timer bundle with the BR1 MK2, there's another video for that to again set up the uh, external devices with the Ethernet cable. The reason why there's two separate videos is because these have the access point controllers and the MK2 and the Mini do not. So it's different different setup and we didn't want to make one giant video. We've broken them up based on what, um, what bundles you have. So you follow those two videos. One is your, your uh, okay, here's your baseline setup best practices video. Then it's how to add these devices. And then if you want to get rid of this ethernet cable and do a wireless uplink, that's this video. All of them are linked below. And now that we're on to the third video, which is the wireless uplink video, let's get started. So in front of us here, we've got a uh, access point by Peplink. This is called the AP-1 uh, Mini. If you have an AP-1 AX or an AP Rugged or any of the other ones, the procedures are essentially identical. It's just a different form factor. Uh, when we talk about wireless mesh, and a lot of our customers want to know how to do this, we're talking about how to get this access point somewhere else in the RV to pick up the signal that the transit is broadcasting. Um, in this case, it's a transit, but you may be with another device. Um, pretty much any of the PEPWAYS we have will, will support this function. Um, so for this example, we're using a transit, but it can be any device. And you want to remove this Ethernet cable. The idea is, can I put this somewhere in the RV and wirelessly uplink it to the cellular internet coming off my peplink without having to run an ethernet cable. That's what we're going to cover in today's video. Now the answer to can you do it is yes. The answer is should you do it is not unless you have to. If there's any way you can run this ethernet cable between the transit and the mini, it will be faster. Wired uplinks are always preferred over wireless uplinks. But we know, for instance, if you're in a slide or somewhere else where it's just impossible to get cables to, we get it, and that's what this video is for. Okay, perfect. So we're going to assume you've got this device set up via the Ethernet cable. It's online, it's working, and now we want to figure out how to get that mesh working. Perfect. So we're going to leave these all powered on with their green status lights, meaning they're all online and we're good to go. Now we're going to hop into the computer, and I'm going to show you how to turn on and configure the wireless uplink or mesh. All right, let's get started with setting up mesh. Now, the first step we want to do is get into our admin console, um, which is typically at 192.168.50.1. Now, you have to be connected to the uh, PepWave Wi-Fi to access your local admin console. Now, mine's located at a slightly different address because I do a lot of tech support, but yours should be at 50.1. Um, the username and password to get in will be whatever you've set. If you have not set one before, the default password is admin, but it will require you to change it at your first login. If you're not sure how to get into this, check out our quick start or get started guide at support.mobilemusthave.com, which will give you the basics. All right, so let's get going with mesh. I'm gonna hop over to the access point tab here, 
and we're going to click on the wireless mesh sub tab and we're going to create some wireless mesh profiles here that uh, the devices will use i'm just going to call this mesh two gigahertz and i'm going to run this at two gigahertz 2.4 gigahertz and i'm going to create a password this should be a password that uh, let's do that now that's not a great password but just for example purposes I've got a capital some numbers and a symbol this password is what the access points will use to talk to each other to ensure your uh, wireless network remains secure now the wireless uplink can only use one frequency at a time either the 5 gigahertz or the 2.4 gigahertz but what I'm going to do is create two profiles so that in the future if I want to switch uh, uplinks to 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz gigahertz I can so let's do 5 gigahertz and I'm going to use the same key here for example purposes only so now I've got two profiles mesh 2 gigahertz and mesh 5 gigahertz that are set up and ready to go I'm not going to apply changes yet just because I only want to reboot once I'm going to click on the settings tab here I've got my default uh, wireless profile here set up now as mentioned earlier please uh, set up your uh, access point using our wireless best practices video uh, before you enable mesh and before you add secondary access points that video uh, is linked below and you can also find it at support.mobilemusthave.com and just search for uh, wi-fi best practices or wi-fi setup and you'll find that article and it kind of gives you the the baselines of how things should be set up but we're going to assume you've done that already so we're going to go here to mesh and i'm going to select mesh 5 gigahertz now typically you want your up wireless uplinks to uh, run on 5 gigahertz as pos if possible because the 5 gigahertz network is faster um, if you experience any connectivity issues or dropouts with the secondary access points or clients connected to the secondary access point you can go ahead and swap that over to the 2.4 gigahertz and um, test that and that usually will resolve any issues but we're going to go with 5 gigahertz because typically an RV is uh, short enough where 5 gigahertz even though it has smaller shorter range will uh, still work for wireless uplink now that we've saved those two we're going to go ahead and hit apply changes and confirm all right so you've got the mesh settings configured excellent the next thing you want to do is be patient and wait i want you to give these devices about 10 minutes to make sure that the mesh configurations are downloaded to the access point from everything you just set up in your in your mobile router but the worst thing you want to do is start unplugging stuff while it's in the middle of the config so let's just be patient give it some time and that will ensure that this device has received the settings you just set up a minute ago we've waited our 10 minutes thank you for being patient now we're ready to unplug the ethernet cable and relocate the device all right guys so i'm hopping over to the other side of the room here and we're going to plug in our access point We've got a solid red light that uh, assuming we've set up everything correctly is going to go green and then the wi-fi light typically on the ap mini and most of these will begin to blink green and that's when we know we're good to go all right so we looks like we've got uh, solid status green i'll give you a close-up on that and then blinking wi-fi now during the boot procedure the wi-fi may go solid green that usually means it's initializing and then if any clients connect to this it will start flashing rapidly, meaning that data is transferring back and forth uh, typically. But don't worry too much if you've got a solid uh, status light that's green and a Wi-Fi light that's doing whatever it's doing because of traffic, you should be good to go. We're gonna take uh, this, put this down, leave that where it is plugged in, and then we're gonna go back into the management console and show you how to confirm that everything's working. All right, so back to our dashboard here. Now, um, I recommend that if you have just recently relocated your access point like we have to wait uh, a minimum of five minutes to allow the wireless uplink and wireless mesh to associate um, and bring that access point online so let's check we've waited about 10 minutes just to be safe we're gonna hop over to our access point tab and boom there we go there's the one that we just unplugged and it is showing um, as available as a managed access point right now 
So let's just go ahead and check um, under Mesh WDS here, and we should get a graphic interpretation of what I'm showing you right now along with our signal strength. And we do. So what we see here is the transit uh, primary router. I've got this uh, access point down below me hardwired in with Ethernet. Again, try to hardwire whenever possible, but we understand it's not always possible with different rigs. And then we've got our AP rear, which is represented by this dotted line over here that is connected via wireless. So wireless uplink mesh is enabled. That's it. You've configured wireless uplink or wireless mesh on a peplink device. Congratulations. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, you can visit our website at support.mobilemusthave.com and check out various help articles or reach out to us if you need some assistance. Thank you so much, and we will see you on the road.